Hey everybody, my name is Andrew Deitch and last weekend I recorded a free Photoshop workshop that I offered on Zoom. Um, anyone could join, I put it out to family and friends on Facebook and I got a really big response. And initially my idea was to have a, a class where I could kind of explain some of my more advanced projects and dive in with some people that had some more um, knowledge about Photoshop, but actually I got so much interest from some brand new beginners that had never even opened up Photoshop or you know they were intermediate. Quite a few people showed up. I had like 22 people show up and a lot of people that expressed interest in it were not able to jump on the Zoom call. So that's why I'm gonna be posting this re-upload right here. But just a couple of things, I didn't start recording the Zoom call until a couple minutes in, and I did a little presentation at the beginning, so I'm gonna redo that presentation for you right now. What I wanted to start off with is you can use Photoshop for some really silly and stupid stuff. So this is one of the first Photoshops I ever did. Um, I say one of, I used to mess around with Microsoft Paint and do silly stuff on there. But um, this was like a dumb example of me just putting my lips where my eyes were, my mouth or my eye. You know, it was just a, a weird example of me trying to get silly with it. Here's another example of uh, I made my friend Trevor into this weird caterpillar thing. I made my friend Cameron into this trippy, weird background. I made myself into a trippy, weird background where, you know, my mouth is in my eyes and all kinds of weird stuff. And here's another one where I put my friend Carl's face all over all of our friends. And again, these are stupid, silly examples, but this is where I got started in Photoshop, so this is my background. Um, <laughs> and uh, here's another example, a bunch of weird, silly faces of me. Um, I personally like uh, the one towards the bottom with the sideways mouth and eyes, that's really weird. And then here's a funny example of me and my friends were at an escape room, and I messed all of our faces up. And uh, here's the last kind of silly example. I matched with this girl on a dating app, actually, and we had an inside joke about her having a tiny head or something like that. And so I photoshopped her head to be very tiny and I sent it to her and she thought it was really funny. So maybe these Photoshop skills you learned today could land you a date on Tinder. <laughs> but um, now I'm gonna show you guys some of the more professional um, graphic design and purposes that I've used Photoshop for. So if you guys don't know me, I do a lot of videos on YouTube and stuff like that, not only on this channel, but also on the Wheels to Walking channel where I work with my friend Richard Corbett and we make videos um, helping uh, wheelchair users improve their quality of life and all that kind of stuff. So you'll see those in just a minute. But um, this was my first kind of professional endeavor where I was using Photoshop on a daily basis and that was the Andrew Deitch podcast. If you look on this YouTube channel, you'll find all the episodes of the podcast on there. Um, but I made this logo. I, you know, I took a picture that my friend had taken of me and I made this logo on Photoshop. I also, this was an alternate logo that I came up with at the beginning. I'm glad I didn't end up going with this because uh, I don't think it would have turned out as cool. And then uh, you can see these are all the album images that I made for each episode. So this is episode 19. She was a celebrity stylist, this girl, Cameron. And so I put some celebrities that she had actually personally worked with on the album artwork. Um, same thing with my friend Miles, you know, just turning it, at, you know, giving it this orange aesthetic. You can see across all of them. We've got this one with my friend Nicole. She was actually on the live Zoom. Um, and we've got my friend Jack. He went from being really skinny to being really jacked. And so I wanted to show that so anyways, these are the things, you, the kind of things you can do with Photoshop, and this is what I did for my podcast. You know, I created all kinds of promos, I created this uh, Halloween pumpkin, um, and then this is where it gets really cool. So the other cool thing about Photoshop is that you can actually end up creating physical items. Um, so this was a mock-up that I had for my studio. I made this mock-up in Photoshop. I took a picture of the corner of the room where I was thinking about putting my studio, and then this is a picture of what it actually ended up looking like. And you can kind of see it change and evolve so we switch the, the walls, but it's, you know, a pretty good mock-up. And, and all that entire sticker wall, that was all made in Photoshop. Um, the wooden sign that you can see on the wall, that was made in Photoshop and then got put into a laser etching machine and, and got turned into a real wooden sign. You can see me there with DJ Will Clark. Um, and, and that became a real physical thing. Again, this is my friend Richard Corbett um, with Wheels to Walking. And this was a picture that we had taken by a really talented photographer called Simon Needham. And Simon took this photo of us underneath the Santa Monica Pier. And then I was able to turn that image into our podcast artwork. You can see there, 
um, I kind of uh, made the background, uh, you can see in the original image, the background kind of has the end of the pier, you can see out the other end, I wanted to be darker, so I darkened that up, I added all kinds of textures, I replaced the text on the actual sign itself, I brought that sign down and now it's behind my head, I created that border around it, you know, gave it this kind of like texture, you can kind of see some lines, almost looks like a CD cover is on it, you know, when you used to buy CDs at the store and had that plastic cellophane around it. So you can kind of see how I was able to take that image to that. And then I also used it to create all of our assets for the podcast. So these are the buttons on our website. It looks like the sign. And actually I used the real sign from the Santa Monica Pier to create those signs. Again, here's another funny um, thumbnail that we made. You know, this is for one of our episodes of the podcast where you're talking about Breaking Bad. And then this is actually really cool. This is a mock-up that I did of our Wheels to Walking podcast studio. And again, this is made in Photoshop. This is not a real image. This is Photoshop. And then if I skip to the next one, you can see this is the real image. This is a real studio. You can flip back and forth and you can see I basically took an image of my old podcast studio because it's in the same exact location. And then I Photoshopped the new signs on the walls and it turned out pretty much exactly how I envisioned it. And that's because I was able to mock it up in Photoshop. So Richard has this tattoo on his wrist. It says temporary. And we actually turned that idea of temporary into an entire merch line. These are all mock-ups that I made on Photoshop. And you can see we actually sold um, these temporary tattoos. Like I've got one in my hand here. Um, so we had a temporary tattoo that comes with every order. We've got a sticker that comes with every order. Um, and we've got these little um, thank you cards that come with every order that uh, say like, thanks for buying the merch. And then on the other side, it's got like, you know, a little mantra card reminding you that everything in life is temporary. We did this video with this girl named Jessie and she was showing how to do a bunch of transfers. She's a paraplegic. She needed to transfer onto a toilet from her wheelchair. So I took this first image. This was just a screenshot from the video and I wanted to make a compelling thumbnail, but you can't really even see the toilet very well. So I basically, you can see if I flip back and forth through these images, you can see how I was able to make her look like she was going on to a different toilet completely and it's just a way more compelling image and then of course i put richard in the corner there and then we've got one more example of a youtube thumbnail so this was a picture of um that we took in texas we went on a trip with the disabled outdoorsmen this group in texas there they take people in wheelchairs hunting and stuff like that and you can see if i flip back and forth here this was the original image that i took on my camera it's a panasonic gh5 and then the next image is after I exported it in Lightroom, so I photo corrected it. And you can see it's a little bit extra. I wouldn't post this exact image on my Instagram or something, but I wanted it to be more saturated and a little more extra crazy because it is a YouTube thumbnail. So I was going a little bit overboard with some of the saturation and colors. And then you can see in the next image how I converted it um, to be even more compelling. So I moved uh, Matt's gun. So his gun wasn't being um, blocked by the mirror. Now it's up a little bit more. I turned on all the lights on the Ford Raptor. I was able to take another image of a Ford Raptor with its lights on and put the lights onto the one that was off. I thought the lights being on looked a lot cooler. Um, I put a little glow around everybody. I made the logo on the back of the truck a little bit bigger so you could see it. Um, all kinds of little things. And um, I, I'm really proud of this edit. Now I'm gonna jump into the last thing here, and this is an image that I created for my Instagram. So if you're on my Instagram profile currently, it is April 2020, um, coronavirus is in full effect, um, RIP, but uh, if you're watching this in the future, hopefully we made it out. This image here is a collage that I made for my Instagram. Instagram is a vertically scrolling platform, right? So you've got um, you know, your grid when you go to your, in, when you go to your page, and so I basically created this collage. This is the real picture right here. And then I was able to Photoshop out every single one of those Polaroid photos into another photo. And actually some of them became videos. Um, so that was pretty cool. But I am done bragging now. I'm gonna stop showing off all the work that I've done. And I'm gonna get into some basics here. So we're gonna jump back into that Zoom call that I had. Um, so apologize, apologies if the quality is a little bit less but I was really proud of how it turned out and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, again, if you get anything out of it, I do link my Venmo and my PayPal information and everything later on in the video. So if you get some value out of this, I'd appreciate you sending me a few bucks. So let's jump into the Zoom call and I'll see you guys afterwards. Let's, um, let's jump into Photoshop. So a lot of people 
don't really know the difference between Illustrator and Photoshop. They're both made by Adobe. And honestly, they're very similar. But the thing you have to remember about Photoshop is Photoshop is dealing with pixels. And Illustrator is basically kind of dealing in math. So it's a vector program instead of a raster program. You don't really need to know this, but just the general idea is that anytime you're working in Photoshop, you're working on a canvas of, that's made up of pixels. So if, you're, if you like zoom in really far, you're just going to end up seeing a bunch of little squares. I'll show you that. But if you zoom in on Illustrator, you're going to see crisp lines because it's basically a math problem. It's not like little dots making up an image, if that makes sense. There's not really like an upper bound to what you can do on Photoshop. Like there's not any, there's no like level that you can get to where you're like, can't do anything else. It's just like a workspace where you can, you have infinite possibilities. So there's no like finishing it. You know what I mean? It's the industry standard for like editing any images pretty much. So you can kind of, the sky's the limit. Like you won't ever outgrow this program, which is awesome. And that's not necessarily the case with a lot of other like free editing software. That's why Photoshop is so good. Um, but there's plenty of other softwares that are, that are fine. But again, I use a lot of Adobe programs. So, and also if you're on a Mac versus windows, just a couple of things. Um, I'm going to probably be, I'm using windows. Um, I'm probably going to be saying like control a lot. And I think the alternative for control on Mac is the little option button, which is that little weird, like squiggly square looking button, um, kind of next to the space bar. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the alternate. If not, just kind of play around with alt and control and those buttons. They're like modifier keys in Photoshop. So again, it's it's the same program, but it's just a little bit different depending on what software you're using. I think and it's also, command. sorry? I think it's command on Mac. Is it command? Yeah. Okay, cool. It's the same. It's what you're describing basically. But yeah. Dope, dope. I appreciate that. What's up, Jordan? Um. Yeah, so basically, it's it's the same program, though, across Windows and Mac. And also, depending on what version of Photoshop you have, it really doesn't matter that much. Honestly, I've used Photoshop for like 10 years, and all the stuff that I've learned is virtually the same across all the old versions. Um, there, there are some updates that I actually do like. Some OG people kind of like don't like the new versions, but that's always the case. Okay, so let's actually open up Photoshop here. I've got it open. Um, let me share my screen so that you guys can see. Okay, can everyone see my Photoshop? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. So when you open up Photoshop for the first time, it might look a little different than this. It probably is going to be on this like learn tab if it's the first time you're opening it. Um, and Photoshop actually has a lot of really good um, tutorials and stuff like that built into the software, um, which is awesome. because the, a lot of the old versions were really intimidating because you just open it up and it was just this blank space and you're like, I don't know what the fuck to do. And you just end up closing it. That happened to me a bunch of times. But what we're going to do is um, we're just going to create new. So there's this button right over here that says create new. So I'm just going to make a new canvas, like a new document. And a lot of the documents that I work in are 1920 by 1080. And that just means the, the, uh, the, the amount of pixels like across the top and across the side. So that's like the boundaries, right? And um, typically that's pretty standard for like YouTube thumbnails. Like I said, I do a lot of YouTube thumbnails. So we'll just make an example canvas right now of 1920 by 1080. And you're, once you create a document, that's when Photoshop really like starts to kind of come alive or whatever. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to only focus on three things. Okay. So it's, it can be pretty intimidating. And actually I'll show you your workspace. If this is your first time opening it is probably going to look something like this. Um, there's like this learn tab over here. There's a libraries tab, there's layers, there's properties, color swatches, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to actually go through. And if you right click on each of these little tabs, we're just going to close them all because we don't really need them. So we can close like properties, we can close adjustments, we can close the learn tab, we can close the library, we can even close this history tab, channels, paths. So the main three things we're gonna focus on is this layers tab over here on the side. So we've got layers on the right side, we've got the canvas in the middle, and then we've got the toolbar on the left side. Those are like the three main things you're gonna need to know. Um, Again, the the tools 
are very flexible. Like you don't necessarily have to use the exact tools. Like there's not necessarily always, oh, you, you're doing this, you have to use this tool. Oh, you're doing this, you have to use this or whatever. Um, I'm pretty much mostly self-taught. So a lot of the methods that I use are just me doing trial and error. There's probably better ways to do some of the things I'm going to show you for sure. Um, a lot of people that have been using Photoshop for even longer than me or do it like even more professionally, I would probably say that some of my ways are wrong or whatever. But uh, like I said, like I kind of showed in my little presentation, I think I've been able to like get by with what I've been able to do. Um, so one second, let me look at my notes here. Um, and also if anything, just if anything ever like disappears, there's this um, little tab up here that says window and you can add back any of those things that you closed. So you can add back the learn tab or the color tab or whatever. All right. So a couple of things. Let's open up just something. So I'm going to actually, here, let me uh, share my whole screen, not just Photoshop. One second. So I'm just going to search for just like a random image. Let's just... Um, in in the document that I shared, there's a, some links to some some uh, royalty free like websites. I like to use this one called Pexels. It's really good, and it a lot of like photographers will upload their pictures to it in really high quality, so you don't have to worry about like going on Google Images and trying to find like really big images to work with or whatever. You can just like find anything on here, and you can just search. And actually, there's um, a few different websites just like this that I listed in that Google document. And actually, um, a lot of them, if you click into an image or whatever, that was actually a video. If you click into an image, you can like donate to the creator. So that's actually kind of cool. Like if you ever end up making money from like using their image or whatever, you can give them a little bit of money, which is cool. Um, but anyway, so I'm just going to grab, let's just say this thing. It's just like a dirt road. I'm just going to grab it. Um, and actually gathering assets, like taking images from other places, it might not seem like this is that important to Photoshop, but actually it kind of is because it's like the foundation of what you're going to be building on. So you always want to have like high quality stuff. Cause again, if you're working in pixels, if you're starting with like a really small image and then you're trying to make it like bigger, you can't regain that information. So you want to start with something big so that you have as much like information in that image as possible. Okay. So I'm just going to like save this to somewhere random. I'm going to call it desert and then um inside of chrome it like popped up down here you can just click and drag it into the photoshop tab and you can click and drag it just like right onto your canvas here and now it's just in there so i can resize it um let's just make it a little bit bigger again this image doesn't really matter i'm just going to show some like shortcuts with with just something okay so a couple of shortcuts to note number one is control s you want to save <laughs> especially if like i said my computer was uh crashing yesterday and the worst thing ever is when you don't save so control s will save so this is an untitled document right now so if i click control save i can choose to save it as something i'm just again going to call it desert but now it's saving it as a photoshop psd which is like the photoshop project file kind of instead of just um uh, instead of just like a JPEG or whatever. And so when you save it as a PSD, that's going to be an editable file. You can always jump back into the PSD and edit um, whatever you're working on again. So I'll save it as a PSD. Okay, so like I said, um, shortcuts. First shortcut is going to be Zoom. I always use Photoshop with two hands. Like you definitely want to. Um, zoom is control or what was the Mac one option? What was it? And command. But you command. can just control, we know. Yeah, you guys get it. Control plus, that's going to zoom in. And control minus, that's going to zoom out. You're going to use this constantly. Um, so, yeah. Once you're zoomed in, if you hold down the space bar, you get a little hand. And then you can click and drag around the image, which is great. Another thing when you're zoomed in, you can just use your scroll wheel and scroll around. If you're using a, um, a trackpad, you can scroll in both directions. And if you're using a mouse, if you, hold down sh uh, if you hold down control, you can scroll side to side. And if you just scroll normally, you scroll up and down. So you can scroll side to side with control being held down. And you can just scroll up and down with a normal scroll wheel. Um, next little shortcut would be 
control Z. So that's undo. We haven't done anything yet, so we're not going to undo yet, but control Z, you're going to use that a lot because it's the easiest way. If you screw something up, you can just click control Z. It undoes it immediately. And in older versions of Photoshop, you couldn't just click control Z a bunch of times. You had to like do some weird thing, but in the new versions, you can just click control Z, control Z, control Z, and it just undoes whatever you're doing. But if you're working in an old version, that might be a problem. You just got to like use control shift Z, I think. Okay. Next shortcut is um, control A, which is select all. So when you click control A, you can kind of see that there's, I don't know how high def the screen share is, but there's like this little thing. It's called ants marching. It's almost like a little dotted line that like goes back and forth. It's, it looks like ants marching in a line. It's called the ants marching. Like that's actually the technical term for it. And so anytime you have the ants marching, that's showing what you're selected on. So I, like I said, I clicked control a and it's selected everything. So, um, if I wanted to, for example, um, just select everything on my screen. I can press control A. And if you want to deselect everything, you press control D. So that deselects. So it's the opposite. So if you're ever trying to like mess with something and it's not working, it's probably because you don't realize that there's those ants marching around some area of the screen and it's only selecting that one area, but you're trying to modify something else. If you press control D, then your selection goes away and you'll be able to modify whatever you're trying to modify. Um, and then copy, paste, and cut. Those are pretty standard across like most uh, applications. Um, you've got control X, which is cut, control C, which is copy, control V, which is paste. Um, I feel like that's pretty standard, but I figured I'd mention it because it's important. And then the other thing, this is just, I, I, don't, I never really use this, but a lot of times if you accidentally press things and you're like, oh no, I just messed it up. I don't know what to do. If you press F again, it's even weirder. All your tools just went away. So if you accidentally press F, just press it a couple more times and it'll bring it right back to where you were. So then your screen looks normal. Same thing with um, uh, tab. If you press tab accidentally, you, uh, it's like similar. You're like, what the heck? What happened to my tools? What happened to my layers? Just press tab again and it'll take you back. Okay. Those are like the most common things that people like mess up and then like, oh my gosh, I ruined my whole thing. I don't know what to do. Okay. So let's get into doing some stuff. So we're going to focus on some tools now. So on the left hand side, you've got your toolbar, like I said, and you can like anytime you've got these little spaces around, you can move them around, but I like to keep mine docked on the left hand side over here. So the top tool right here with these little arrows, that's like the move tool. It's the most common tool you're going to use. And the shortcut for that is V. So if you ever click V, you'll be on the move tool. So again, like I've got this picture, this desert, I clicked V and now I can move it around however I want. Um, the next thing is your selection tools. So you've got like three main selection tools here on the left hand side. And if you notice, um, every tool, not every single tool, but most of them have this little triangle underneath of it. If you press and hold on it, it'll reveal some more little tools underneath of it. So for example, your tools might not look exactly like this because you might be selected on one of the alternate tools underneath that little folder. If that makes sense. So like I've got right here the rectangular marquee tool, but if I click elliptical marquee tool, now it changes to this little circle. Oh yeah, sorry guys. I was going to turn this on before. I've got this little plugin. Oh yeah, nice. There we go. So now when I click things, you can see it on the screen. So see how it says like control F or whatever. Sweet. Sorry, I forgot to turn that on, but now it's now it works. Um, so anyways, so let's say we we're just trying to like get... get this guy and select him somehow. So like one of the easiest ways is just to grab the rectangular marquee tool and you can just drag a little rectangle around him. And now you've got the ants marching around him and you could do like control X that would cut, that would cut him. Actually, one second, this is a smart object. You could cut him. So now he's gone. You could copy him and then paste him. So now I've got like two of them over here, just another square and that created a new layer. And, um, you've also got the lasso tool, which is pretty great. Um, I'll show that in a minute. And then you've got the magic wand tool, which is pretty awesome, especially for beginners. Like people love using the magic wand tool almost too much sometimes, but, um, 
let's let's do something a little more practical let's get rid of this desert oh yeah and also i'll explain the layers tab over here so on the right hand side you've got this layers tab it's really important so um you know how on like uh what was it called in school when you had like the little transparencies where teachers were like projecting the thing onto the screen you have like transparencies you could put on the little projector and you could write on each transparency so imagine layers like a transparency layer like a piece of like um, you know, transparent plastic that you can put things on. And the, the layers at the top are going to be the ones stacked on top and, and going down, you're going to have basically that that's, that's how they're stacked. So if I made a new layer, so you, you can see right here, down here at the bottom, there's this little plus button that makes a new layer. So layer two is my new layer. Um, I'm going to grab my brush tool again. I'm, I'm kind of, skipping ahead but i'll show you so i'm just like drawing on this with my brush tool it's on this layer so it's not actually drawing on the desert layer it's just a random it, it's another layer so imagine it's that's a transparency when i press this little eyeball it goes away i'm making it disappear when i put it back it now it's back and i can i can erase just on whoops i can erase just on that layer now so i'm not erasing the desert I'm erasing just what's on that layer that I created. So you're, so you're creating a non-destructive edit. That's one of the things I'm probably going to say a lot is you want to focus on creating non-destructive edits as much as you can because you can always do undo, but sometimes Photoshop, it can only store so many actions. And so you can't undo yourself out of certain problems. So like, for example, if you, um, you know, we're an hour deep into some project and then you realize, oh shit, I actually needed to go back and change this one thing about this one picture. If you had a destructive edit, meaning you change the information of that layer um, without it being modifiable later um, by either putting it on a different layer or putting like a mask or something, I'll explain that later, um, you're going to be screwed. So again, we're going to try as much as possible today to have non-destructive stuff. Another thing to, to, to note is there's this little options bar up here, this little bar um, underneath like file, edit, image, layer, all that. And this options layer is going to change every time you change a tool. So see when I change the tools, that little options layer changes. So if you're ever like, oh, what the heck, where, where is that option? It used to be right there. It's probably because you're not in the right tool. So it's all contextual. So like depending on what tool you're in, it's going to give you op different options for that specific tool. Um, and yeah, depending on what tool you're in, it's going to give you those different things. So if you're ever confused, it's probably because you're not in the right tool. Okay. So let's, let's actually do something with some text. So I'm going to delete this desert. I'm going to go back to Pexels and I'm going to search for, I have an idea. I want to create like an advertisement for like, um, let's say a, seltzer water or something right and it's like orange flavored so i'm going to type in oranges onto pexels and we've got these beautiful backgrounds that are all made by different people um i like this one right here that looks pretty cool um it's just a bunch of oranges so i'm gonna open this in a new whoops i'm gonna open the image in a new tab i'm gonna save it in a folder somewhere on my computer i'm just gonna call it oranges and then again, you can just click and drag it from your Chrome tab into Photoshop. Or if you're in like a Finder window or a Windows Explorer window, you can grab it from there, click and drag it into Photoshop. Now, earlier, I just dragged it onto my canvas, but you can also drag it up here next to this little tab and it creates a new canvas actually, which is kind of cool. So just like in Chrome or in Safari or something, when you're surfing, when you're surfing the web, um, you can switch between different websites. Um, same kind of thing in Photoshop. You can switch between your different um, images. So like I've got oranges here. I can work on this project over here and then I can switch back to the, the, my original desert project over here. So I'm going to grab, I'm actually going to drag my oranges project or my oranges image into that desert project that we created earlier that was the 1080 by um, 1920. And this image is probably way bigger. So see how I've got this blue like little box around my image? That's because, like I said, it was actually, it was actually a bigger image than um, my canvas. Let's, let's make it really small for a second. 
So if I make it super, super small and then I click enter, that's going to like confirm my selection or return if you're on Mac, whatever. Um, and then let's zoom in. So see how now I'm zooming in and it's way more pixely. If I zoomed in on my original oranges image, if I zoom in on that, there's all this detail here. So what happened? What happened? So because I was in a smaller um, canvas and I made it smaller, I lost information. Again, this is because in Photoshop, you're working in pixels. You're not just dealing with like a, an image. So because I confirmed that selection, I made it smaller. Um, I lost it and that was what, what we'd call a destructive edit because now if I try to make it bigger again Let's try to like bring it back now. It looks like crap And even if we you know zoom in it because we made it small and then we made it big we lost information But if we were to I'm gonna delete this layer. So, um, or actually I, I did it Um, so i'm back to square one if you dragged the image directly into the canvas or if you right click you can do a thing called create a smart object so convert to smart object right here so now this is a smart object you can kind of see this little tiny gray um box over here on my layers tab i don't know if you can really see that but on this little orange layer there's this little gray thing that means a smart object and then once i try to resize it now it's going to have this blue x on the image that's how you know it's a smart object so now if i resize it and I make it really small and i click enter I zoom in and it's still going to be pixely, but when I re bring it back to um, full size, it maintained all the information. And that's what a smart object does. So it's like smart because it doesn't lose information when you resize it. The problem is, is you can't do things like erase. So if I grab my eraser tool, it's got this little, um, you know, X sign saying like you can't erase it. And that's because it's a smart layer. So the way to undo that is if you right click on your layer again, and you click rasterize layer. That's just a fancy way of saying like convert it back to normal pixels, make it dumb. And now I could grab my eraser tool and I could start erasing on my orange. But again, that's a destructive edit. I don't want to do that. Everyone kind of following? That was kind of a lot, but okay, cool. So now we've got this orange background. Again, I'm gonna let's um we're we're making an ad for seltzer water. That's what we're doing. So I'm gonna grab my text tool which is over here on the left-hand side. And Photoshop now has this thing where now if you hover over tools, it kind of shows you what they do, which is pretty dope. It didn't used to do that. Um, it's kind of annoying because sometimes once you already know what it's doing, you're like, okay, get on with it. I don't want to see these annoying pictures anymore. But it's, it's pretty cool for beginners. There's probably a way to turn it off, but I've never turned it off. Um, so we're just going to grab the text tool right here. And now you can see my cursor kind of changed to like a little text selector thingy. So if you just click anywhere on the image, it's going to create a, you know, just a, a standard like Italian. What is that? Latin? Laura Mipsum? It's just like a filler text um, that's just, it's just going to appear until you edit it. So again, if, you, if, you, if you're on the text tool, you can just type in. So let's, uh, what should we call our seltzer company? What's the title of it? <laughs> Boof Water. What is it? Boof Water. Boof Water. <laughs> Okay, so let's call it boof. I'm gonna do boof and then water. So we've got boof right here. <laughs> That's amazing. And then I'm gonna create another um, text that's gonna be water. So we got boof and water. I'm gonna resize them. And I, you can see over here on the layers tab, I've, they're two separate things. So I've got water and see how it's just a T that's, that means it's a text layer and boof. That's now a text layer too. Um, so that means it's editable with that, it, with that text tool. Another thing to keep so in mind. So do you have to create two text boxes? You don't necessarily have to, but I'm going to do something a little bit different with each one. Um, if you okay. wanted it to look um, like that without doing that. So for example, I could just, click enter, boof, water. But again, for graphic design purposes, I kind of liked the idea of having them be like the same size, sort of like water is a little bit smaller than boof. <laughs> so <laughs> like I wanted to make it two separate layers so that, um, cause if you see, like if I drag them on top of each other, water's a little bit smaller, but next to each other, they look kind of nice cause they're like the same width and everything. Um, so that's why I made them two separate things. But you could potentially put it in the same layer. If I, like I said, if I just click enter and um, 
but again, I don't have as much flexibility, um, with where I want to place it and stuff like that. You can, um, do certain things with the character window. Um, but I'm not going to get into that right now, but that's a good question. Okay. So I'm going to, cool, cool. I'm going to undo out of that. Okay, cool. So now we're back to this. Um, can just, I ask a question? Yes. Okay. I always have this problem when I'm uh, creating a new file. Mm -hmm. I never know what resolution to put for the image. What's the standard to use? That's a good question. So yeah, starting off with the right resolution is really important. I started off with 1920 by 1080. Um, that's pretty standard for like an HD image, like quote unquote HD. Um, like a lot of, you know, TVs use that resolution. A lot of computers use that resolution. You'll what hear about a lot of pixels? people talk about like 4k, you know, like TVs, 4k, my phone is 4k, whatever. 4K is basically like um, almost like four 1080 images uh, in a square. So you could even go up to that, which is technically uh, 4K is um, 3860 by 21 or 3840 by 2160. Again, it's like, it's kind of arbitrary. It, it depends on where you're going to be putting this. So again, if you were going to like be putting this on, um, okay, this is going to go on social media a lot of social media is going to get really compressed. Like, you know, if you put it on Facebook, they're going to compress it. So you're going to lose a lot of that detail anyways. So don't worry about like, okay, well, if my original photo was like so big, um, you know, uh, you know, you're, you're going to end up losing a lot of it. So you kind of, you got to kind of like start from where, where is this going to go? You know what I mean? Um, hmm. But what I, I mean, the, there's the pixel per inch. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That. I, I tend to use 100 pixels per inch. That's just what I've like gotten used to. I use that a lot cause it's kind of a nice round number. Um, okay. but you can use whatever you want really. Cause, cause again, if, if the pixel number is the same, it doesn't really matter. The only thing it's going to kind of affect is this ruler on the top and bottom. And you can actually get rid of that by clicking, I think control R. Yeah. So you've got this little ruler that, that appears. You can just see it or not see it. It really doesn't matter very much. But if you're trying to make something for print, for example, or like, for example, I'm, when I made these um, stickers, I knew that I wanted them to be like three inches long. So I set the resolute, I set my canvas to be um, 100 pixels per inch. And then I made it like three by one or whatever the height of okay. this was. Um, but if you're not really dealing in like a physical object, like if this isn't going to go on anything physical, the, the resolution per inch doesn't really matter. Cause it's, again, it's, it's really more for that ruler. And also if you click, um, control apostrophe, I think it is, uh, it's something there's a, there's a shortcut where you can see like a grid, um, and, uh, basically if you want to see the grid, um, that also kind of affects with the inches. So if you, okay. if you're like snapping things to a certain grid, um, but good question. Um, okay. So let's go back to the, um, booth layer. So there's a bunch of things you can do with text. One of the biggest things I see when people are trying to make text stand out, that's like hilarious to me is they're like, okay, so this white doesn't really work that great. Cause there's kind of some white in this orange, right? So you can't, you can see it pretty good, but it's not like amazing. So some people are like, oh, to make it stand out, I should make it like blue or something, which isn't like the worst idea, but it's not really the thing that we're going for. Maybe we're looking for more of like a clean look or whatever. Or uh, the worst is when people just are like, oh, I'm going to make it like um, all the way red. What the heck is happening right now? Here we go. My app is like freezing. Yeah, there we go. Like, oh yeah, it's all the way red. Like that looks terrible. <laughs> but people do that a lot because they're like, oh, well, black and black didn't stand out and white didn't stand out. So I'll do red. <laughs> it just, it doesn't work that great. So I'm going to undo out of that. I'm going to just go back to white. So now I've got my white layer. And this is um, something that's pretty powerful that a lot of people don't utilize enough. And that is drop shadows. I love using drop shadows. So if you double click on this layer right here that says boof, it's going to bring up your layer style menu. And what that does is it gives you all these different things. So you can do like, uh, you can, you can add like all kinds of stuff. So you can add like a shadow behind 
your layer and you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So you can make it like very precise and you can make it transparent. You can change the size of it. You can make it softer. You can make it harder. And that's one of the biggest tools that people don't utilize is this layer style menu. And again, all you have to do to get it is double click on the layer or you can, um, gr there's this little FX thing down at the bottom and you can grab, you can do like individual ones, but I prefer just to double click on the layer. And again, um, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can like overlay patterns over it. You can do drop shadow. So I'm going to go to drop shadow and I'm just going to do like kind of a soft little shadow here. You can kind of just adjust the sliders to make them do different things. Um, and again, this is kind of just playing around with it, but that stands out way more than that, right? Cause you've got kind of this soft layer, but it doesn't look like you have like an outline necessarily, but it's just like kind of a soft little thing that makes things stand out. That's one of the biggest tools. I use that all the time. And that's one thing that I think a lot of people miss is using that little layer style thing. And so you could do that again with the water. You could do the same little drop shadow thing. And now it stands out more. Um, I'm going to take those off. So I'm going to do something pretty cool here. I'm going to show you guys um, the uh, clipping mask tool. So let's say like we have these orange, like we have an orange um, drink, but we also have like a kiwi flavor or something, right? So let's go back to Chrome or your web browser. I'm going to keep, I'm going to stay on pixels. I'm going to type in kiwi. So I've got this. This looks pretty sweet. I like this. So that's like a cool Kiwi background. Again, if you ever make money from these images, you can donate to the people that made them. This person's photo mix LTD. Cool deal. So now we've got this Kiwi image. I'm going to save it as Kiwis. Kiwis. And then I'm going to drag it back into Photoshop. And I'm actually, again, I could drag it into this image and that'll make it a smart layer. Or I could drag it up here and bring it into its own layer. But... I'll, I'll just drag it into the canvas and that means it's going to be a smart layer. So I'm dragging it onto here. So now it's a smart layer inside of this thing, but now it's covering up all of our image. And what I'm trying to do, this is just like a cool effect. I'm going to try to make the letters of this text layer. I'm going to make them have the Kiwis, but only on the text. So the, the easiest way to do that on the layer Kiwis so if you right click, you can click this thing called create clipping mask. And now you can see that I've got these kiwis inside of my layer, which is pretty awesome. And it's only, it's almost like a tablecloth. This is another really powerful tool that's really simple to use, but a lot of people don't even know about it. Like when I found out about this, it was like a game changer because you can use it for all kinds of stuff, which is really awesome. Um, the other thing that you can do is now if I add back my shadow, you know, let's adjust this maybe a little bit. So like if I kind of change the opacity, which means like the see-throughness of it. So like if I'm on this Kiwi layer, there's this little opacity slider up here. You can kind of just like slide it back and forth so you can make it more see-through or not. Um, so like now I've got like this little Kiwi thing, but I've also got the orange thing. This doesn't look that amazing, but it's just a cool um, concept. Um, one second, someone's trying to join. What up, Jimmy? He's probably coming in here. What's up, Jimmy? Um, okay, so that's how you use a clipping mask. Again, it's kind of like a tablecloth draping over the layer, which is pretty cool. Um, so now let's, uh, let's talk about, um, again, this is something that's like really common is dragging a like graphic or dragging another um, image into the existing image that you have. So let's say, um, again, this is like a fake seltzer water company and we're going to just find like a generic can, like a, you know, like a Coke can or whatever. So I'm going to go back to Pexels. I'm going to type in can. Uh, let's type in um, sparkling water, actually. Maybe we'll find something cool. Uh, that image of that kiwi is pretty cool but i'm trying to find like a can or something so we can like put it in there let's just type in um 
soda can. It's not going to be exact for our purposes, but it'll work. This looks kind of cool. Let's steal this. <laughs> and again, I said stealing, but the, but the cool thing about, about um, fair use, like about using like a conglomerate is like, as long as it's transformative, you can use whatever you want. Um, obviously, if it's copyrighted, you can't use it. But this website, Pexels, is all like free images that are super high quality. So you can take them and use them for however you want and the owners won't get mad at you, which is awesome. So I'm just going to call this like can. I'm going to drag it into Photoshop. And I'm going to drag it into its own layer because I'm going to do something to it. I'm not going to just drag it into this canvas just yet. All right. So now we've got this can and I'm going to try to put it like over here on the right side of this, of our image. So if I go back to my, uh, I've got my uh, tabs up here. I've got can now. And I'm going to try to isolate just this can by itself. And that's like one of the biggest things in Photoshop. People are like, how do I, you know, cut something out or whatever? How do I like make something um, cut out of a background and put it on something else? And there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. So um, you've got these like selection tools. You've got a bunch of them over here on the, on the left-hand side. So you've got this rectangular marquee tool, which is like really sloppy, just an easy way to grab like a rectangle. That's not going to work because we need to cut out the exact can, right? We've got the lasso tool, which is pretty cool, but this is um, kind of sloppy too because you have to be really precise. This is almost like a pair of scissors, but see if I kind of like go around, I'm not doing the best job of cutting that out. And now if I, um, I'll just show you, I'm kind of skipping ahead, but I cut it out, but I've, it didn't look very good because I didn't cut along the edge very exactly at all. It looks pretty bad, honestly. Um, but, and, and that was just because I messed up for one second and it was like, oh man, I have to start over. So the lasso tool is not really my favorite. I don't really like using the lasso tool, but underneath the lasso tool, like I said, there's this little triangle thing. If you press and hold, now you've got a couple more options. You got the poly polygonal, polygonal, polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool. And these are way better. Um, the, I'm going to show you the polygonal lasso tool first. So if we zoom in by doing control plus, um, you can basically, what, what it's going to do is you click a point and then you just keep clicking and it keeps adding to your line. I don't know how well you can see the line here, but you kind of can just trace around the image by clicking on each point that you want to make like an anchor. And because this can is like straight across the bottom, I can, I can make this line like almost go straight all the way to the bottom which is really easy and then just kind of trace along the bottom here. Rounded edges are not that great for the polygonal lasso tool, but you can just add some extra points to make a little bit more of a curve. And then again, the edge is pretty much completely straight, which is nice. And that wasn't too painful. That was pretty easy. And now if we control C copy, so because we've got the ants marching around this coat can now by control C, then control V. Now I've got a new layer over here and it's just the can. Anytime you see this like checkerboard pattern, that means that that's transparent. It's, it's the technical term for it is an alpha channel, which means that it's, that there's nothing there, but it's still, there's still, um, you're still bound by the box. So if you save this as like a PNG or something, it would save this transparent alpha channel but you would, it would still be the full like resolution technically of the box, but um, you'd only be able to see the can, which is cool. But not all applications can use an alpha channel. Like, so if you try to open up a transparent thing inside of another app, it might just default to putting white in the background or black in the background. Um, and up here, you can kind of see I, I didn't get the top of the, coat, of the can like exactly right here. So one of the easiest things you can do is just go to the, um, eraser tool, which is E if you click E and the eraser tool is really awesome, but it is destructive. Like I said earlier, we're going to try to not be dis not do destructive edits as much as possible, but this is a super simple fix and we do want to get rid of it. So one of the things you can do this eraser, you can kind of see the circle is, is way too big. Like if I tried to do something with that, it's like erasing way too much. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to uh, control Z and undo that. And one of, there's a couple of different ways you can change the size and the hardness. So imagine your eraser is kind of like a paintbrush. If you had a paintbrush that was like very exact, that would mean it's super hard. 
And if you had one that was very soft, it means it's not very precise and you can use it for blending. But right now we want it to be pretty hard because we're just trying to get rid of that little weird corner that we did. So one of the easiest ways you can do is just right click. You can use this slider and adjust the size. So um, if you don't really know your idea of what the pixels even are, you can kind of just like mess with it and you can see that the bigger you go, the bigger your circle gets. And sometimes the circle gets so big that you can't even see it this zoomed in because it's covering the whole area. But I'm just going to go with something like 26 pixels for this. And I've got the hardness set to zero. So again, I'll show you. If I have that, see how the edge is super soft? If I zoom in even more, you can see like the pixels. Some of them are semi-transparent and some of them um, are completely gone. So the more I erase, I'm kind of using this soft edge. So this is great for blending. If I was trying to blend this into something, I could just like blend it right in. But because I'm trying to like harshly get rid of that little weird uh, tail, I'm going to bring the hardness up to 100% which means when I use it now, it's like erasing exactly what's inside the circle and nothing outside of the circle, if that makes sense. So the hardness is basically the preciseness. So that's a good way to think about it. So if I'm trying to get rid of this little corner. I can kind of just paint around it. So now I've got the edge that looks nice. I can zoom back out and that looks great. And again, that was so tiny. I could have probably gotten away without doing it, but it, it's just an easy way to get rid of something is using the eraser tool and the brush tool look works pretty much the same way, except for obviously an eraser is going to be erasing information and the brush is going to be adding information, typically just like a solid color. Um, I'll kind of show you that right quick cause we're talking about it. So if you use the brush tool, which is B easy to remember B for brush, uh, but over here you can just click it. Um, this, the default for over here underneath your toolbar, see how you've got these two little squares, one's black and one's white. The black is kind of like on top of the white. The black is your foreground color and the white is your background color. So these are kind of like your default. So if I open the brush tool, I know that it's gonna, I'm going to start brushing in black because the black is my foreground color. There's this little arrow thing right here where you can click it and it'll switch them. So now if the white's on top, now if I'm using the brush, it's white. So that's just an easy way to switch through. And if you want to change the color, you can just click on that little white thing and you can make any color you want. You can adjust this slider and basically choose like any color. So if I wanted to do a purple brush, I could draw with purple. So if I take my eraser tool again, I can actually um, erase from this purple because I don't want it. Or I could grab a little selection tool and delete it. I'll explain that in a little bit. But anyways, I, I'm going to change this back to white because it's easy, easier to remember. Okay. Um, also, another thing you can do to change the um, hardness, like I said, you can right click and you can adjust these sliders or another way to visualize it is if you press. All right. Just a little side note here. While I was filming the video, the Zoom call, I couldn't remember what this one shortcut was, but after recording, I did figure it out. So this is another way to change your brush size and your brush hardness or eraser hardness and eraser size on the fly without right clicking and going into that little menu. So what you do is you hold down alt. So while you're on an image, you hold down alt and then you left click, hold down your left clicker. And when you scroll your mouse to the right or to the left, when you move your mouse to the right or the left, that's going to adjust your brush size. And you've got this cool little red animation that happens. So you can actually see in real time what your brush is going to look like and where it's going to affect. And then the coolest part is if you keep holding those things and you, and you move your mouse up or down, that adjusts your hardness. So on the fly, you can adjust your hardness and your brightness and get a visual representation very quickly without jumping into those menus up in the left corner or right clicking and adjusting those sliders. You can see it in real time just by holding down alt and then right clicking and scrolling your mouse to the right or left or up and down. It's really cool. And I'm really sad that I missed that in the zoom call. Cause I, um, I personally don't use it all the time, but it is a really good way and it's a good habit to get into of using that. So I'm glad that I was able to include that here. Okay. Back to the zoom call. So now that I've got my can isolated, I'm going to go grab my move tool again, which is V. I don't know why it's V, but that's just the move tool shortcut. So now I've got this can isolated and I'm going to drag it back into my image over here and you're like okay we just dragged it where did it go why isn't it there you can see it in the layer tab 
I'm going to rename this layer. Actually, you can rename. I wasn't being a very good Photoshopper. You should always name your layers so you can stay organized, but it's just layer two over here, but I'm going to name it can. So I've got a can and you can see it over here on the layers tab, but you can't see it over here. And that's because it's behind my Kiwis layer and my Kiwis layer um, is hidden because it was on a clipping mask. So again, like remember if it's like a transparency, if you've got layers of transparencies, um, the, the, we want it to be on the top, right? Cause we want to see it. So if we click and drag it up to the top, now it's sitting on top. So again, it's kind of like a stack of paper. Your layers are like a stack of things. So if you, if you're stacked up, I want my can to be on top. That's what we got. So, but it's not this, it's not the right size. It's, it's kind of too, too, um, too big. So up here, when you're selected on the move tool, there's a couple of check boxes that you'll use a lot. Again, this is in the options bar. The options bar will change depending on what tool you're in. You've got auto select, which is going to so automatically select the layer that you click on, which is really nice for beginning for people just starting out because it's very confusing. If you're not selected on the right layer over here, you could be trying to move something and you're like, I'm clicking on it. Why isn't it moving? But it's because you're not selected on the right layer. But if you have auto select turned on, if I'm, if I click on the can, it's going to move the can. If I click on the text, it's going to move the text. If I click on the orange, it's going to move the orange. But if I unclick auto select, see how over here I'm on the orange, I'm only going to be able to move the orange. Even if I'm on the can, I'm only going to get to move the orange. So auto select is really helpful. But if you're ever wondering like, why the heck, like I'm trying to just click one thing. I'm not trying, and it's hard to just get that one thing. You can unclick auto select and then just go over here to your layers and click the layer that you want to mess with. So the other box up here is show transformation control, show transform controls. And this right here is really, um, really simple for um, just clicking and dragging, making things bigger, smaller, whatever. Um, if that's not showing, you're not going to have a way to transform it unless you click control T, which is the, which is transform. But just one of the easiest ways is if you always have this box checked, you can just easily click and drag things smaller and bigger pretty easily. So I'm going to click and I'm going to click, uh, one of these little boxes and make my can smaller. So now it fits over here. And if I turn back on this uh, clipping layer, I can put my Kiwis back if I wanted to, or I could even just do that. I could have my oranges disappear. I can make it look like that. Um, but again, this is just like a simple, um, really not that great example of, of graphic design, but you can kind of see some options. You can use the text tool. Um, you can use clipping masks. You can, you can, uh, cut things out of a bigger image and drag them onto another image. Um, again, the selection tools are pretty powerful. So let's go back to our can. I'm going to undo some stuff. So let's say I wanted to just select this can, but I wanted to do it in a different way instead of like tracing around the outside. Another thing you can do is this magic wand tool. And a lot of people uh, like to use the magic wand tool because it's magical and it's pretty easy. And if you select somewhere, if you just like click somewhere, see how now it's like selecting similar areas. So if I wanted to just select the background, I could click over here and now it's kind of selecting the background. But since the background's slightly green, it's also selecting some of our can. So what you got to do is there's on the options bar up here, there's like this tolerance section you can mess with that. So basically it's right now it's at 50. So the tolerance means, okay, so I'm, I'm, if I'm using the magic wand tool and I'm clicking on one of these pixels, it's kind of green. Let's zoom into it. It's like one of these green pixels. It's going to look for 50 shades of green warmer and 50 shades of green cooler. That's what that tolerance is. So it's basically trying to select things that are similar in color. So if I click on that again, the can is like partially green. So it's, it's the tolerance is not low enough to be able to work it. So like if I lowered it and went down to like 20 and then I now use my wand tool, still not that great. Cause again, it's kind of a green thing and a green thing, but you can kind of see how now it's making a smaller selection. And if you have this button contiguous clicked, it's, it's going to make it. So it only selects the pixels that are next door to it. So if I had it unclicked, it's going to use the whole canvas to try to find similar colors. But if I, un but if I click contiguous, whoops, if I click contiguous, now it's only going to make 
selections based on the ones that are next door to it, which is nice because sometimes you're not trying to select the whole thing. You're just trying to select a portion of it. Okay. So now let's, um, let's ditch our seltzer water picture and let's make like a YouTube thumbnail because that's my wheelhouse. Pretty easy. So one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest trends right now is like, uh, gender reveal videos. So I was thinking we can make a gender reveal YouTube thumbnail because we can make it really silly. So also, by the way, it's one o'clock. So I said that at the beginning was going to be pretty much like beginner kind of stuff. And then at one, I'm, I'm going to be getting into more advanced stuff. So I'm going to get into a little bit more advanced stuff in just a second, but hopefully everyone's following along. Does anyone have any questions by the way, right now? I know this is kind of a lot. Cool. I'll just keep going. Um, so let's, let's go and, uh, make a new, um, image. I'm going to X out of this. I don't even care about it. Okay. So new, and again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do 1920 by 1080 and I'm going to do the resolution by a hundred cause I'm going to make a YouTube thumbnail cause that's standard size for YouTube thumbnails. So, um, for a thumbnail on YouTube, you typically need a face, right? So I'm going to go back to pixels. And I'm going to try to find someone that's surprised. So let's, I'm just going to type in surprised. And we've got all kinds of great pictures of people acting all surprised. Um, I like this lady right here. She's pretty surprised. So I'm going to take her. I'm going to save it to my computer. I'll call her surprised lady. And I'm just going to drag it into its new layer. Now I'm going to show you how to isolate her from her background. This is this will be an easier way to show that magic wand tool. So again, if I use that magic wand tool, you can kind of see if I'm clicking around the background, it's pretty easy to um, select, but it's not very precise. And that's why the magic wand tool is not the best. The other thing that you can use is this quick selection tool. So if you if you go to the magic wand and you long press on it, you go back to quick selection, you got this other tool that basically you can kind of draw in the areas that you want to select. And now you can see that I was able to create a way more precise selection, even though it's kind of sloppy around her hair. Hair is the hardest thing to do in Photoshop to isolate. But since this background's pretty solid and her hair is not like all over the place, like you have a lot of uh, string strands of hair, it's really hard to isolate it. Um, there are obviously ways to do it, but I'm probably not going to show this today because I'm honestly not that great at it and it's pretty hard. But um, you can up here there's this option to switch between plus and minus so you can add to your selection or you can delete from your selection so again um let's see here yeah here we go so i didn't get her hair very good so i again i was like adding to the selection up here but i didn't get her hair very good so i'm gonna subtract from the selection and kind of draw back in her hair a little bit so now if you look around the image, you can see that the, the subject is pretty isolated. It's isolated pretty well. So if I go over to my layers tab, I'm only on this background layer. And if I try to do something with it, I like deleted it. It's going to say like, what do you want to fill it with? Because this is the background layer and it's locked. So what you're going to want to do again to make a non-destructive edit, I want to make a copy of this layer so that, I, so that I can always go back to it if I want to. So I'm going to go to this background layer. I'm going to click and drag it down to this right here, this little plus sign. That's just an easy way to make a duplicated layer. And then I'm going to hide the background layer. So now if I delete this, I click just delete. Now I've got this lady isolated and now there's a transparent layer behind it. You can see the checkerboard behind her. So I'm going to take her, I'm going to drag her into my untitled thing that I made earlier that, that shaped like a YouTube thumbnail. For people that are just joining, we're making a gender reveal YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> so we're going to make her very surprised. And then we're going to do the same thing with a guy. So let's, uh, we're, we got to find the dad. Where's a surprise dad? I like this guy. So I'm going to open that up, save him. And I'm going to call him surprised guy. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to isolate him. But this time, I'm going to show you a different way to select him. So 
there's also a tool called the magnetic lasso tool. So I showed you the polygonal lasso tool and that's basically for straight lines, but the magnetic lasso tool will kind of like magnetize to where it thinks edges are, which is kind of cool. So if you start over here, well, we'll start at the bottom and then I kind of just drag along the area where his arm is and you can click to add points. Whoops. You can click to add points, but you kind of just drag around where he is and basically you can start to select his body. It's not that precise sometimes, especially if there's complex backgrounds. Also, if you hold down the space bar, that's how you move around while doing this. So see, if I, if I press the space bar, I can move around. That's one of the things I didn't know originally. I'm like, this tool sucks. But you can kind of select them. But again, it's not working that great right now, but I just figured I'd show you because it's an easy tool to use if the background is like pretty solid. I'm just going to double click and get rid of that. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do the um, the tool that worked pretty good earlier, the quick selection tool. I'm just going to select the background. And that time it didn't do a very good job. It kind of didn't select his arms. So again, I'm going to go back up here to click the minus or you can click alt on your keyboard and that'll switch you to the minus. And you can kind of draw back his arms here. You can draw back his hair and his head. So now I've got him selected pretty decently. Go back to plus, grab that. And then there's like this area right here next to his hand. I'm gonna make, if you grab this little drop down menu right here, you can adjust the size of the slider, adjust the, the size of your selection tool. So I'm still on plus. So now, whoops, that was a little too much. Again, if you click alt, you can draw it back. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to, I, last time I created a new layer and then I just deleted the background, but that's destructive. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right click. You can see here that I actually selected the background, but I don't want to select the background. I want to select the guy. So if you right click inside of the area where your ants are marching and you click select inverse, now I'm selected on the guy. And then if I, again, I right click on him, I'm going to say layer via copy. So now I've got a layer that's copied, but it's just the guy. So see on my layers tab, I've got a background layer that has the full image. And if I make that disappear, now I've got the guy just isolated by himself and he's got that checkerboard behind him. So I'm going to drag him into here. So now I've got the mom and the dad, they're all excited. And again, that was like a kind of sloppy um, cutout, but for most purposes you can clean it up a little bit better if you want to and then i'm going to show you guys the gradient tool real fast so the gradient tool is underneath the paint bucket so right here there's like a paint bucket tool maybe the gradient tool is the one showing for you so you've got gradient tool and you've got paint bucket tool the paint bucket tool if you um just use it it'll just make the whole thing it'll just drop a bucket of paint on your layer and it'll cover the whole layer or if you dropped it on the guy it would probably paint like his shirt in different areas, depending on how precise um, of color of red it was trying to paint. But we don't want to do that. We're going to use the gradient tool. And we want the gradient. I'm going to make a gradient of going from like baby blue to pink because I'm going to show it's going to be like a gender reveal, right? So remember how I showed you the foreground and background colors over here? So we've got black and white over here on this toolbar. So I'm going to click on the black. I'm going to change that to be like a pink color. So that's like a nice baby pink. And then I'm going to go back to the white and I'm going to select a baby blue. And then I'm going to go back to the gradient. And up here, you've got some different options. So right here, it'll say like basics. And there's a default right here. That's going to default to make a gradient between your foreground color and your background color. So see how right here, I've got a gradient between blue and pink. If I had these foreground colors set to like black and white, it would have been a gradient from black to white. But I'm going to do this real fast. So I created a, um, I'll show you guys, I created a layer behind these two people. So I just click this button right here uh, at the bottom. That's going to create a new layer. It actually sandwiched it between the two people. So I'm going to click and drag it behind them. And I'm going to use my gradient tool. And the way the gradient tool works is you click on one point and then you drag and it makes this little red line and then it makes a gradient. So that's actually pretty simple. 
Um, there's other ways you can make a gradient. You can do a radial gradient up here on the options bar. There's all these different types of gradients you can do. Like a radial gradient would make it like in a circle. So like the pinks in the middle and the, the blues in the outside. But I like the way we had it. And then again, I showed you guys earlier how to do a drop shadow where you can do like a, a little shadow behind them. But on a lot of YouTube thumbnails, one of the biggest things people do is like a glow kind of around them. So I'm going to actually uh, use this outer glow layer. You can change it to or, um, style. You can change the color by tapping on the white there. And I'll put like a pink layer behind him to make him glowing. And then I'll put like a blue layer or a blue glow behind her. And that's pretty cool. And then we could add like a little bit of text. So if I made them, if I made them a little bit smaller, I could put some text up here at the top. Like if I grab my text tool, I could put boy or girl, <laughs> boy or girl, boy or girl. I don't know. Oh my gosh. But I'm going to make that white. So again, if you grab down here, what boy or girl i don't know and that's um an easy way to just make a quick little compilation of things i'm gonna jump into some advanced stuff in a second i know Brittany, you wanted to see my uh uh instagram collage thing so i'll jump into that in a second but um but yeah so this is the the, the that's just like a simple way i'll save this actually let's save it as um gender reveal so i'll put that inside of the folder so if you guys want to play around with it or whatever you can but um, that's just an easy way to like make a um, collage or make a compilation of images on Photoshop using text, using images, using a gradient. Um, I showed you guys how to use selections and stuff like that. I feel like those are the main basic things that people want to know how to do in Photoshop. The other would be to retouch images. And I'm going to go over a really powerful tool very quickly that's really, really, again, it's really, really powerful and it's very easy to use. So I'm going to open this up. Actually, I already had it saved because I, I um, wanted to use this specific image. So I've got this picture of this person with really bad acne, okay? This is pretty terrible. And you're thinking, if you're trying to retouch this image, you'd think it'd probably be kind of hard to get rid of that because you're like, how do I create clear skin? There's a bunch of different ways you could do it, but one of the easiest ways to do it is with a tool called the Spot Healing Brush Tool. And... I love using this tool. I use it all the time. And basically what it does is it uses surround it. There's this up here. You can, you have like different types in the options bar. You've got content aware. Content aware is like the main one that I use. Basically what it does is it uses the content around. So let's say I'm trying to get rid of this pimple right here. This gross little white head. And I just draw on it. It's going to use the information around that area to create fake pixels and actually make it completely disappear. And that looks pretty dang good. I mean, if you zoom out, you can't even see that pimple anymore unless you were really looking for it. Again, you can kind of just keep doing that to different pimples all around. And again, I'm using like a soft brush with this. So if I did my hardness all the way up, it would create like a harsher thing. You want it to be soft when you're blending, things like that. Um, but you can just kind of go around and go to these different spots and you can actually like get rid of most of this stuff because again, it's using the content aware. It's using what's around it um, to get rid of these pimples. So you can literally just go around and get rid of um, a, a lot of this stuff. And it, it looks, I mean, this is kind of a sloppy job because I'm just going so fast, but you can use this on anything. Like you can, you know, if you have like a little weird thing um, on an image, you can just grab that little paint um, the little, uh, what's it called again? Spot healing brush and just go around and, um, kind of clear things up. And again, this is just a super simple tool and it's really powerful cause it's pretty smart. You know, it's using all the information around it. You can even use it like this one, this, this pimple over here, it's like in the hair, but it did it pretty good. I mean, it created some weird hair. It doesn't look exactly right, but if you're zoomed out and you weren't looking for it, you'd never notice that, you know? So that's just like a really cool tool that I use all the time. That's really powerful. And a lot of people, you know, are wondering how to do things like that. The last thing I'm going to cover in the kind of like basics area is another really powerful tool that's called liquify. And this is like 
the Instagram thought favorite filter of choice. So basically, it's going to make, uh, you're going to be able to manipulate bodies. You're going to, you know, you've seen like the really bad photoshops of people where they like try to make themselves thinner or, you know, whatever. They try to like make their, tighten their waist, all this kind of stuff. I'll show you how that tool works and I'll show you kind of the right way and the wrong way to use it. So let's go back to Pexels. I'm going to do the standard, very stereotypical thing of editing a body. So I'm going to type in shirtless guy. I'm not going to objectify women on here, okay? <laughs> Let's try to find a guy. Okay, this guy is like pretty decent. He's, you know, he's like kind of muscular, but not super muscular. So let's make him a little beefier maybe and maybe like do something. So I'm going to call this shirtless guy. And I'm going to use the liquify tool. So again, I'm dragging it into its own new thing. And when you drag it onto its own new layer, it's going to create its own, you know, canvas based on what the dimensions were of this image. Again, if I was like making it into a YouTube thumbnail or whatever, I could click and drag this back into the gender reveal thing or whatever. And now it's inside of the constraints of that. But just keep that in mind. I'm just going to keep the, the original image. And it's, it's pretty high quality. It's decent. We can work with it. Okay. So again, this is super powerful, but use this use use your powers for good and not evil okay so we've got filter and we've got liquify so at the top here we got filter liquify it's going to bring up a whole different menu this looks completely different than what we were looking at before but this is like the crit one of the coolest tools one of the most powerful again use this power for good and not evil because you can do all kinds of manipulative things to people so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to mess with his face so over here, you can actually see it's got this thing called face aware liquify where literally I can adjust his eye size. Look over here on his left eye here. If I zoom in, I can literally make his eye bigger or smaller just by dragging that because it knows it's an eye. Um, another thing you can do is just the eye height so I could make it taller, skinnier, more open, more close. This is a really cool thing on YouTube thumbnails because a lot of times you're trying to make someone like really expressive or whatever. So you can exaggerate their features. Again, I wouldn't uh, recommend necessarily like photoshopping your pictures to put on Instagram because um, then people are going to see you in real life and know you don't look that good. But, um, <laughs> but uh, on, like, on things like this, it's, it's actually pretty fun. So again, you can mess with people's faces. You can adjust their nose height. You can adjust their nose width. You can adjust their upper lip and make it fatter. You can make it smaller. I'm going to make him have big, juicy lips. <laughs> We're going to give him a big, wide mouth, <laughs> make him smile. And you can even make the smile go up or down. It's hilarious. You can do all kinds of stuff with this tool. It's super fun. Um, but uh, again, use this power for good, not evil. Okay, so let's, let's sh I'll show <laughs> you. He looks so goofy right now. So let's go and, and I'll show you how to like make his muscles bigger because that's what we want, right? So, <laughs> excuse me. So up here, we've got this, these little tools on the side. They're different tools now. And we've got the forward warp tool. We've got reconstruct tool. We've got the smooth tool. We've got the twirl clockwise tool, the pucker tool, the, par the bloat tool. The bloat tool is the one, the bloat and pucker are the kind of notorious ones with this tool. And the bloat tool, what you're going to do, I'll, I'll click on it. I'll kind of show you how it works. I'll adjust the size. Uh, that's a little too big. But if I want to make his pecs bigger, I could literally just hold. I'm just clicking and holding. And now his pecs are growing it's making his nipples kind of weird but uh <laughs> but you get the idea and you can kind of click and drag around and do all kinds of stuff with this you could make his abs a little more again this is called the bloat tool so it's kind of like puffing them up um you can make his abs a little more pronounced again this doesn't look that great but it's kind of fun to just mess around with and you could even use this forward warp tool i think yeah that's what it is you can kind of click and drag his arm out even so like i can make his shoulders bigger or i can you know make his biceps a little beefier or whatever you want to do um and again i'm doing a really sloppy job i'm not like doing a you know professional job on this but when people think of photoshopping they're like oh this image is photoshopped a lot of times they're using this liquify tool to adjust features to you know make his let's make his waist go in <laughs> his waist looks ridiculous doesn't doesn't look real at all but you see how you can just easily manipulate these pictures but the easiest way to tell if a picture is manipulated is you can look at the pixels around it right like 
it's it's a also clicking and dragging um other things around it it's not just isolating his body like this tree looks super weird and like you know the the things around him are moving like if i was to use it it, super exaggerated you can see that now this tree over here is like bending to the right slightly like if i you know if i use it too much the tree's gonna look wrong um but the easiest way so now I, i i clicked okay and i saved it but again the thing that a lot of people do wrong is they don't um fix those mistakes so i'll kind of show you how to like er fix that background thing and i actually did the i did a i did a mistake i didn't use um i used a deconstructive edit there because now i've only got one layer and it's got those mess ups but what i'm going to do so i'm just going to click and drag my shirtless guy in again voila whoops that didn't work drag him in again voila now i've got him in here again and i can just now i've got my original image again Okay. So now I've got the the messed up weird crazy looking one on top and I've got the original one underneath. So you see if I click the eyeball, so now I've got like this this weird thing going on. I can flip back and forth. I can make him look super weird and I can make him look normal. The thing that you'd want to do in this case is you can use the eraser tool or you could use a layer mask. I'll show you guys how to use a layer mask real fast. A layer mask is a non-destructive way of erasing. So under here there's this tool right here. It's got this little square with a circle in it. And that is a layer mask. So I'm going to click on it and see now it made this little white thing next to the image and it created a lay. This is called a layer mask and it operates on grayscale. It's almost kind of like a, um, it's almost kind of like a tablecloth. So imagine if I had this white tablecloth, right? And then I cut a hole in the middle of it. So um, I'm going to cut a hole right here and see how I'm now erasing the background I'll, I'll visualize it a little bit better i'll put like a solid thing behind it i'll put a pink layer behind it hey andrew real quick i'm sorry man yeah um, i'm looking at your image and you're right on the corner of the screen and i think you're clicking on the options right on that corner so we can't really see it i don't know if you can move your if your face Oh, my bad. My face is covering it. I think yeah. you, on a computer, I think you can click and drag the people around. Like, you can drag me around. I could be wrong about that, though. Like, I can drag you guys around. I don't yeah, know. But... If you're on your phone, I don't know how you can drag it around. Is can everyone? Is everyone else having that same problem? Uh, no. no I'm you, can, you can zoom out as well. There's the zoom ratio. The view options. I got it. Up. I see it. I see it. I see it. Okay, yeah. perfect. Cool, thank you. Awesome. Welcome. Okay, so so again, so we've got this um we've got this uh tablecloth here. We'll call it a tablecloth for the purposes of this, and it's a white layer. And again, it operates on like grayscale. So basically white means it's visible and black means it's not. So see, it, I I don't know how well you can see this, but over here on this tiny little picture, you've got this white square with this black image because I drew some black, and what that did was reveal this pink layer behind it. But before we did that, um, if I was to disable the clipping mask, the disable the layer mask, see that tree was all wonky. But when I enable it, because I erased behind it, I erased part of my tablecloth, and now behind it, I've got the original shirtless guy. Now I've got the tree that looks normal, but I was able to keep the um, I was able to keep the the muscles that I wanted to erase. Same thing with um, you know his face. Like let's say I was like, okay, yeah, I kind of messed up his mouth. I, I want his mouth to go back to normal, but I want to keep all the other changes I made with Liquify. I can go over to this layer mask. So I've got it selected right here the, on the white. Make sure you select it on the white. And I can click my brush tool again, B. And I'm drawing in black. So I've got my foreground color set to black. And I can just draw. And now it erased off the weird mouth and it revealed the new mouth underneath, if that makes sense. <laughs> Anthony, I liked your chat. That was awesome. So basically, you can you can reveal anything back that you want. And the cool thing is because this tablecloth thing is non-destructive, we can add it back, which is awesome. So if I switch my brush tool back to white, I can brush back the weird mouth because it's a non-destructive edit. This layer mask is non-destructive. So see how if I switch it to black, I can click X, by the way, to switch between foreground and background colors. So see right over here on the toolbar how the white and black squares, squares change if you click X. 
So I'm clicking X. I can draw and I can erase his mouth. I can click X and now I'm selected on white and I can draw and now his mouth is back. Because again, white is the tablecloth. Black is like a hole in the tablecloth, if that makes sense. So, Andrew? so Andrew? basically, yeah. Oh, I no, go question. for it, JD. So would it be worth doing using the cutting tool first and going around the, his body and then using liquify? You probably could, yeah. The that's definitely a good option. Um, I probably would do that in certain circumstances, but also sometimes if you cut it, not exactly precisely, like see how I'm, I'm zoomed all the way in on his um, shoulder here. There's right. kind of these the pixels weird pixels square. that are like almost in between the background and his body, right? Like he, maybe he had some hair, maybe it's like a reflection or whatever. And that's kind of like it, sometimes it's hard to cut those exact things. Like I still want that reflection there. Once I liquefy it, if I'm dragging his body around, I kind of still want the background to slightly blend into the foreground. But um, if I cut him out first, that's kind of a, a destructive edit. And then I wouldn't have those like in between little pixels. And again, that's kind of like with blending, um, you okay. wouldn't be able to get it. But, but yes, definitely. There's a million ways to skin a cat in Photoshop. You can do so many different things. Um, there's, I mean, the way that I'm describing right now is a pretty like rudimentary example of it. But um, obviously people that are doing this for a living are using all different kinds of different ways because Photoshop's been around for like 20 years. Actually more. It's been around since like 1997 or something like that. Um, but uh, th so there's a lot of different specialized tools. But again, I'm just like kind of covering the basics. And, and, and the Liquify filter is just one of those really fun filters that you can just goof around with and, and do all kinds of fun stuff with. Again, like it even recognizes the faces. So you can just mess with faces, do all kinds of weird stuff. Um, but again, use your powers for good and not evil. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to jump into some more like kind of advanced things here. So um, if you guys are, uh, you know, just starting out, you might kind of get lost here. So if I lose some of you guys and you want to sign out, um, again, like Lindsay mentioned in the beginning, I would appreciate if you got some value out of this to, um, shoot me like a Venmo or something like that. I'll put my information on my little virtual background here. Haha. <laughs> I don't know how well you can see this, but, um, if you want to shoot me a couple bucks, I'd appreciate it because I, uh, I spent a lot of time thinking about this and working on this the past couple of days, trying to figure out what I was going to teach about. Does anyone else have any questions or anything, um, anything else? Uh, thank you. No. Yeah, thank you, bro. You're a magician, man. <laughs> <laughs> a wizard. Like, man, I have trust issues now, but I, but I love you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That yeah. is the funny the thing. You said that it was all uh, self-taught. That's insane to me. I think. Thanks, yeah. man. That's yeah. crazy. It's, it's been, it's funny too. Cause I, I always have like imposter syndrome where basically you always think that you're like not good enough or whatever. Not yeah. always, but in certain, a lot of different things, especially if you're like self-taught cause you're like, Oh, some, someone's going to join this freaking chat that knows more than me and is going to think I'm wrong <laughs> or whatever. But then I'm like, it, it, the, the cool thing about Photoshop is there's never like, like I said, kind of in the beginning, there's no cap to how far you can go with it. It's more just like how fluent you are in the tools, how fast you can get with your shortcuts. You know, especially in like professional environments, it's not even necessarily if you can do it. It's like how fast can you turn it around and things like that, you know, because that's some of the, that's one of the more important things in that regard. But um, uh, what was I going to say about that? But yeah, basically like there's, there's no limit to it. So you can, you know, take it as far as you want. If you're doing it for fun, you know, it's obviously just a, a really powerful tool for fun things, but you can also like take it all the way and do all kinds of crazy things. But I think the coolest thing of Photoshop for me is if I want to make something visually, I can probably figure out how to do it unless it's involving like 3D modeling or, you know, something mm -hmm. that I'm creating just something completely from scratch. That's going to be pretty difficult for me just because I'm not as skilled in that area or I haven't, you know, practiced in that area. But if I need to you know, for example, make a YouTube thumbnail where someone's bald or something. I know how to take, you know, another person's bald head and put it onto another person's head or, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like I can, I, you can learn how to do it. So, but anyways, thanks for joining everybody. I, I appreciate it. I'm glad that everyone seemed to enjoy it. All right. So actually at the end of this zoom call, I did get into some more advanced stuff and I'm not going to include that in this video simply because um, I wanted this to be more of a beginner's video so that people could go back 
and watch um, some of that beginner stuff. If you were one of the people that was really interested in seeing some of the more advanced stuff, I'm gonna be continuing to upload on this channel. I'm gonna be doing more of these Zoom calls. So if you're wanting to join in, um, shoot me an Instagram DM, shoot me a uh, message on Facebook. Um, I will, I'll be sure to add you to the next class. They're absolutely free. Again, all I'm doing is wanting to provide value. I've got a lot of um, knowledge over the years and it's, it's kind of fun for me. And also, um, it, uh, some of you guys have been so generous to donate a couple bucks to me um, for doing this, so I really appreciate it. That is all for now. Um, you can check out the rest of this channel, not really Photoshop related or anything, but I've got all my podcasts from all the previous years. Go check out Wheels to Walking. That's what I'm currently working on right now. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.